Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Hashtag Sports. Since we are talking about quarterbacks, I felt, you know, we have a statistic, uh, statistics here and there that we end up finding that are actually really fun to talk about. And actually on the screen right now, you're going to see a graphic from, um, this, is, uh, this is actual stats. I've looked them up. It's pretty amazing. You know, career games uh, with not having a top 10 defense. Playoff wins? Is it playoff wins? Uh, yeah, percentage of career playoff wins without having a top 10 defense. Okay, all right. And as you see on the screen, <laughs> as we like to talk about here, it's a Bills channel. What do you think is going to happen? Right. Uh, all the way at the bottom is Tom Brady with 11% of his playoff games. Sports is proud to partner with Mr. Rogers Homes. Sean Rogers is a proud Western New Yorker and is now your Arizona relocation specialist. You can see his reviews as a top 1% agent on Zillow, Homes, and Trulia.com. Go ahead and download his free Arizona relocation guide found in the description of this video. Subscribe to his YouTube channel and, as Sean would say, God bless America and go Bill. Mike, I'll go to you first. <laughs> I can't believe the percentage is that high. <laughs> Because we, we talk about this all the time, and people have, have said it, you know, in, in circles that we talk to, wins are not a quarterback stat. You can't have wins as a quarterback stat. So if you're debating the greatest quarterbacks of all time, how could you just, okay, we're going to go by rings. Okay, we're going to go by this. We're going to go by that. What is your criteria for a, quarter, for a quarterback to be the, the, the best quarterback uh, ever? Yeah. It's hard, like, I was talking with my son about this the other day, about, you know, how you compare the best ever in a team sport. It's really hard to do. There's so much subjectivity that goes into it, right? You can look at stats, you can look at range, but there's so much luck involved in a team sport. There's yeah. so much, uh, there's so, there's a team, and in a sport like football, you have an offense, you have a defense. Quarterbacks don't play defense, okay? Is Mahomes or Brady playing free safety? No. <laughs> All right, I had an argument with my son, the other day about Aaron Rodgers, because he said, well, if Aaron was so great, how come he didn't bring him back for San Francisco? Yeah. I said, he's not on the punt protection team. <laughs> All right? That's all I'm saying. That's and, you know, in the end of the half, he throws a bomb to the, a wheel route to the running back, and instead of getting out of bounce, dude cuts back inside. Now we got to blow a timeout. We missed the field goal. It's 7 yeah. nothing. That's not Aaron Rodgers' fault. Get out of bounce, dude. Yeah. Aaron will throw you a touchdown next play. That's right. <laughs> so, That's right. Um, there's so much luck, but it, I think the eye test is important. Um, you know, and when I say eye test, I mean, is this guy big? Is he strong? Is he fast? Is he mobile? Does he have a cannon? Those are things you could say, oh, wow, well, yeah, look at look at that guy. Some but guys, but those are tangible. Those like, are tangible. Yeah, yeah, you can yeah, see those, yeah. right? Um, intelligence, uh, that goes into a quarterback. Now, I, and that's, I, you know, I'll give Brady a credit where credit's due. Brady's a smart dude. Mm -hmm. He's a very smart dude. Um, and then one of the other aspects is in the fourth quarter, you're down. Do you want that guy leading your team? Who's the guy? Like, who pops into your head, right? In my mind, Aaron Rodgers always pops into my head. Mm -hmm. now, now, Patrick Mahomes always pops in my head. Mm -hmm. Josh Allen even. Josh Allen is becoming that top tier. But all time, I want Aaron I want Aaron Rodgers to have the ball. This guy never turns the ball over. No. And always makes big plays. I don't know. I'm, hey, Kirk Cousins should be in that discussion. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> He can't beat Notre Dame, so he's out. Yes. That's a criteria, too. <laughs> he's got to beat Notre Dame multiple times, Michigan State. Michigan State. No, like it, it's it's a game. Three times, three and over Notre Dame. I mean, because we talk about, and then there's a bunch of other stats, too, about you know Aaron, Rod Aaron Rodgers. You know, he's uh, in his nine playoff losses or something like that. His, his team has surrendered 35 point, like six points or something like that. It's like, how is that? It's not him. No. He's doing enough on his end to score points. And you're right. He does not turn the ball over. I think... Was the one year? Didn't he have like 40, 40, uh, 46 touchdowns and like four picks, four picks or something, something like that? Yeah, it's something, something absurd. He's so he's, he's he. It seems like he processes the game so much faster. But like, I I think Paul and I we had this discussion before. Is like when you put so many resources into one player, like like the green like Green Bay has, it's like the antithesis of what Brady was doing. Brady was never the highest paid guy on the team. He's like, listen, you need this money to spend on the defense or spend on offensive line to do that. Because I know I can't do it myself. He learned that early. Well, and those two, I mean, I've talked to New England Patriot fans. They're like, yeah, those first three Super Bowls, those, those were all the defense. We knew Brady. That wasn't Brady's. That mm -hmm. wasn't Brady. The first one was patriotic. Only one, the Patriots win. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then the other two, their defense carried them. 
Hundred percent. Well, you know, I think it, that that's an interesting point, right? Because yeah. if we scroll back a little bit, the if you look at Brady and Rodgers, right, and yeah. try and make a comparison to Josh Allen, we talk now about how excited as Bills fans we are that Ken Dorsey is the offensive coordinator, right? Because everything's going to stay the same. Brady has rolled through offensive coordinators throughout his career. Aaron Rodgers really hasn't. But just is it like being is it like being Adam Gates to Peyton Manning, like? How much does the offensive coordinator really matter yeah. when you get leadership like Brady, Rodgers, and from what we heard from Deion Dawkins on SiriusXM, Deion Dawkins was making comparisons not directly to those players, but the things that he says about Josh in practice are the things that you would hear teammates of Rodgers and Brady mm. say about them. So, like, everything goes through Josh Allen. Yeah. So is it a, are we getting to a point where the offensive coordinator for Buffalo almost... How much does it really well, I think, I think that's what they paid for. I mean, you, you don't yeah. make that kind of investment of $260 million unless you don't think he can work with any coordinator that comes in. Right. And well, any coordinator that, can work with him. Right. Is that why a player like Kyler Murray, Arizona is not giving him money? Is that why a player like Lamar, they're not giving him money? Like, they're just not paying these guys. Are they not, you're saying are they too, not those players? You're saying they're too reliant on the coordinators themselves. Or the, or the system. Yeah. No, those are just athletes. That's what they are. But that's, that's what I mean. Like quarterbacks. But, but those are sit back and oh yeah, but they're safety. depreciating values. That was the thing about Allen that we we're always worried about. Like, listen, Allen's going to be a depreciating value if he doesn't learn how to throw the football better. So the last two seasons, what has Allen done? He's throwing the football, 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 football better. better. He he he's better. no longer a depreciating asset like that. But you can yeah. teach that, Paul. You like I said before, you could. He's got a laser. He does. You could teach accuracy. You can go in the backyard and hit the tire. I don't know. I remember, times. remember Zach Mettenberger. That didn't work out too well. Christian Hackenberg. That didn't work out too well. Well, those guys didn't have arms like Allen, though. Allen's just point and shoot now, which is great. Where are you? Did you ever hear the tale of the Juan story about Zach Mettenberg? No. Oh, this is so funny. Did I send it to you? No, I saw it somewhere else. So, the tale of the Juan is in the... In the uh, By the way, I have PTSD anytime Taylor the Juan gets brought up. Really? Yeah, because it's total PTSD. Because the, at that draft, that was the draft the Bills traded up for Sammy Watkins. And I was like, just draft Taylor Lewan, Jordan Matthews, and get out of here. That's all you got to do. Draft Taylor Lewan, he's a sure thing. Draft Jordan Matthews in the second, he's a sure thing. And they trade up for Sammy Watkins. He's t- so bad. He's telling the story about Marcus Mariota going out one time. He's, he says in the huddle, he's got his hands on his knees. He goes, they're down three scores, so he knows they're about to be th- throwing the ball over, <laughs> all over the earth. He goes, suddenly, a whiff of wintergreen comes in the, in the huddle. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, Mettenberg has a show about this big, has the one bar strap. He goes, all right, guys, listen, let's get this in the f***ing end zone. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, down, throws one pass. Yeah, 60 yards on 60 yards on <laughs> He goes, you just see this whiff of wintergreen coming up. <laughs> But that's a different type of leadership, right? Like mm-hmm. that is that is guys we got nothing to lose here. Yeah. You know, that's Shane Falco level level leadership. Yeah. And, but Allen's not on that level, right? No, like, that's not how Allen leads. The first couple of years though, that's why we were worried because he was almost on a Cam Newton trajectory where he's running a lot, yeah. he's taking these hits. Yeah. You saw Newton do a very similar thing where he was he was very athletic. He had, you know, I wouldn't say Newton has a bad arm, but it, no, nowhere near the level of Josh. Well, Allen. his his arm is not good anymore. Not anymore, no. Yeah. But we started. We were like, okay, we're a little worried about him running a little too much, doing this, that, and the third. But now we see in the last two years where his development was, he's starting to read a little bit faster. It's not one read and run. It's one, two, three. Okay, I can I can progress now. Mm-hmm. So, and that's what you that's what you end up paying for. So as we take a look at this. How far now that since this discussion has flipped a little bit, how far is Allen? Like, do you think he's a lot closer than people think to a Brady or Rodgers type quarterback? Or do you think that he's he's a one of Brady, the, man. I don't know what you're talking about. No, well, I'm saying like processing. Because we're talking about how smart Brady is if he's, he's you know, like is able to his ability to process. I think Brady's up Brady's, there. Rodgers is up there. Right. Brady's uh, calling coverages to the running back at the snap on the play action. Sure, you know, he's, like, he's also throwing the ball six yards. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I hear Brady, Brady is smart, but look at the total package. Look at, look at the total. Don't just look at reads. Look at the total package. Yeah, sure. Are you are you saying Josh Allen is the Lex Luger? 
No, I, can he, 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 <laughs> he so if you look at the quarterbacks in the NFL, right? Let's I was let's say you're starting a team. Okay? Josh Allen would be in the top three, I think, of everyone's list. In my in my mind. Yeah, right? I yeah, he outranks quarterbacks who were of similar type that teams have gone after. So I think Allen has done something interesting where teams aren't afraid of some of the things that they were afraid of before. Right. Look at look at Herbert. Right. Herbert is up there, but Herbert's got a ways to go. That's a great. That team is consistently good. Yet yeah. they're not winning. Why? Best quarterback in the draft too. Oh, it's Herbert. I called that by the way. He's the closest to me. In his to him. Well. Well, yeah, that's what I mean. For profile. profile. Yeah, yeah. For a profile. Yeah. yeah. We talk yeah. about the tangibles we talked about before. He is the closest guy in the NFL to Allen. Yeah. And that's remember we talked about when Brian Dable did not leave last year. Mm-hmm. It was like the only place he considered to go would be the Chargers. And I'm like, gee, I wonder why. Yeah, shocker. <laughs> Herbert's a top ten. Uh, he might be. A t- he might crack into the top five if you're starting a team. Yeah. Um, I got to tell you, for the last probably five years, nobody has cracked Rodgers and Mahomes in my eyes. Like mm-hmm. you're, you, yeah. know, you, you want to put the ball in a guy's hand. Right. Those are the two. Right. Now it's creeping up there. Like he's third right now in my mind. Okay. And, let me let me ask a very dangerous question. Ready? Here we go. You take Mahomes and you trade him to the Commanders. Yeah. Still wins games. Still wins games. Not the same Pat Mahomes, yeah. but but that's Mario and I were talking about this a little while ago too about um, moving systems. Like yeah. You take a Peyton Manning, right? Mm-hmm. Survive anywhere. Right. Gets the game. Understands the game. Yep. Has a good enough arm to do it all. Rodgers, Mahomes. Those guys are all like that. Mm-hmm. Guy like Mac Jones. Guy like Tom Brady. They need a system to fit into. For their mold, yeah. Brady's kind of developed a little bit more because now he's like on this Jack Lalanne kick where he doesn't eat sugar or meat. But, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a specimen. Jack Lalanne. Yeah. He's a Brady's specimen. Now. Hit the like button if you got that reference. <laughs> Brady's kind of developed, and to his credit, he's developed. But, um, and, I, and I told you this yesterday. Yeah. You're starting a team right now. If Tom Brady's in your top ten, we're not friends anymore. Okay? <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I mean, I could. I mean, people like to throw shots all the time. No, did you? Because they said I saw a post the other day that said something like, "Imagine having two of the best quarterbacks of all time and only having two rings to show for it with Favre and Rodgers." Mm-hmm. I'm like, whoever made this post doesn't understand the game. Like, you did have two of the best quarterbacks of all time forever, but you yeah, didn't but have any defense. I think the difference is though. That's like you had Tom Brady being the AFC representative for forever, right? Yeah. And in the NFC, they were just knife fighting each other <laughs> to play Tom Brady every year. That's yeah. the way that it was. Yeah. That's so it doesn't matter how good the quarterbacks were in the NFC. You're just the law of averages says you're not going to do what yeah. you went did. Right. Well, you know, that's just the law of averages. Well, mm-hmm. mathematically, and I think we said this. You look at Tom Brady's career in the AFC East, okay? Because the AFC East was so poor. Oh God. Right. So bad. Your pe- and it wasn't because of him. It was they were just they were just dysfunctional bad. Orders. Yeah, you're, you're, bad you're, you're playing. You're, you're, so you're playing six games in the worst division in football, arguably, right? Yeah. You're winning five point six games a year. Mm-hmm. You need to win four games in the <laughs> remaining right. ten to make the playoffs every year. That's it. So mathematically, how important is that? All right, you win some games, you get to the playoffs. You're not playing an important game to the AFC Championship game, really, because mm-hmm. everyone stinks. <laughs> so you, you, you win one game in the AFC Championship game, now you got to win one to get to, to the championship, or to win the championship. Yeah. Mathematically, I like your odds. That's yeah, there, and we, we did a, I did a breakdown of Brady's nine um, AFC Championship games, and it was just, the, the quarterback play for the opponent was just putrid. Oh, yeah. well. there were, Brady had more... Rushing touchdowns from his running backs, than total touchdowns scored by the other teams. It's you know you <laughs> talk about gambling, you talk about five it's touchdowns to beat the house in nine games. Do you remember that? It's hard, to yeah. beat, it's hard to beat the house during Brady's career in New England. They were the house. Yeah, they yeah. were the house, man. Yeah. Five, over five wins a, a year in your division. Got to win four more somewhere else, sprinkled in with all. And these. I think he had a five hundred record against. Playoff team. Well, you know, I think that, I think that's sort of like part of that conversation, though. Is you know, we talk all the time about this team in, in Buffalo. Just it's the same team over and over again, right? Yeah. And you put that film out there over and over and over again. It's always the same film, right? Mm-hmm. It's always yeah. the same film. New England didn't have to do that. They could do whatever the hell they wanted. They would burn whole games because who are they playing? Yeah. Well, they're playing, you know, a, a, a Miami team that scored three points in, in yeah. the last four weeks. 
You know, you're just burning film. Those are games that are useless. Whereas yeah. Buffalo hasn't had that. Uh, they they haven't had that easy a path where you could just burn whole games of film. It just doesn't exist. Well, I think they're starting to do that. And what we, this might be a discussion for another another episode is the fact that they're doing that defensively, where mm-hmm. you see the same thing all the time on the Buffalo Bills defense, yet nobody's able to crack it. Mm-hmm. When we talked about they got to change some stuff up. They got to change some stuff up. Do they? No. Do they? <laughs> do they? If it works and you can't beat it, what's the difference? I mean, we right. talked about it with um, who was it? Uh, Jim Schwartz. He says, I line up in 4 3 and I just punch you in the mouth. And the coach, they're not doing anything special. They're not blitzing. They're not disguising this. They're not doing that. They're just coming up and beating us physically. If you can't yeah. ask with Jim Schwartz, you can't play. <laughs> that guy gets cranks me up just looking at him. I, I love Jim Schwartz. <laughs> it broke my heart when Jim, so yeah. Jim Schwartz left. Well, that's what broke my him heart. and Rex were the end. George Tim Hart. Yeah, exactly. Two polar opposites. Yeah. That's what I mean. Guys, make sure you hit that like button and that subscribe button if you think Brady sucks. So, uh. <laughs> yeah. you know what? We talked about Tom Brady, so you know what's going to happen? A bunch of TB12 ads are going to show up on this video on YouTube. I That's always that. Whenever we see Tom Brady, TB12, you know, uh, keto diets. Okay, I'm going to get my avocado toast. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't eat bread. <laughs>